Welcome. I'm Ann Shank from the League of Women Voters, and we're here today with Wells Lyons and Mayor Michael Brennan to have a conversation about the issue that's on everybody's mind in Portland, partly uh, about discussing how to protect public parks and urban spaces in Portland, and how and the level of citizen involvement in that process. We'll do the approach two different approaches. The first is that there's an elected uh, representatives of city council who actually enact ordinance and park decisions that make park commission that makes decisions about how those lands are taken care of. The citizens initiative which will be on the ballot this spring gathers signatures from the city and through that process then uh, puts it on the ballot and if it wins during the election then that becomes part of city law. So what we'd like to do first is to start with an introductory statement from each of these representatives to talk about this from their perspective. And so we'll start this afternoon with Wells Lyons. Thank you, Ann. Uh, I'm Wells Lyons and I'm a volunteer with Protect Portland Parks. And we're here today because Portland's parks are under attack. Uh, a few years ago, the city council closed the parks department. Uh, they cut 26 positions in the parks department. And just recently, the mayor and the city council have tried to sell uh, in a no-bid process one of our parks in the heart of the downtown. Um, unfortunately, this process was uh, resulted in a, a sale or attempted sale that was a fraction of the fair market value. Now they're claiming the problem is solved with this ordinance that they've just passed, but in fact what the ordinance has done is offered only weak protection. Uh, Protect Portland Parks formed in response to these threats to our parks, and what we are intending to do is to pass a law on June 10th by voting yes that will add protections to 60 of our city parks and open spaces. Uh, what this law does will give the voters a right in deciding whether or not their parks are sold. Okay, Mayor Brown. Well, I really didn't think I'd get an opportunity to disagree with Wells so quickly. Um, <laughs> but it's absolutely untrue that Portland parks are under attack uh, in Portland, our open spaces are under attack. In fact, the city council has made a concerted effort uh, over the last year, several years to add to our public spaces. Um, and we're very focused on uh, protecting and enhancing our parks in the city because we know the value that they have to the city. Um, what this initiative that people will be voting on on um, uh, June 10th is simply whether or not people support the Congress Square uh, proposal or whether they don't. Um, it's really not an issue about whether or not you're protecting parts or not protecting parts. Briefly, what the City Council did um, uh, at the end of April at the meeting was to pass an ordinance that had a protected list that is actually more robust than what is in uh, the petition drive. It says that in, in, in any time in the future that anything that's on that protected list, if it were to be sold or another use for it, it'd take a seven to two vote, and it would also be an advisory uh, opinion from the Parks Commission. Very straightforward, very clear, very easy to understand. Um, so I, 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 I really don't think that there's evi any evidence that anybody can point to that parks in Portland are under attack. And really what this boils down to is a disagreement with some people uh, in the city as to whether or not the Congress Square initiative goes forward. Um, is there anything unique about Congress Square as opposed to the other parks, either from your perspective or yours? Uh, I think the only thing that's unique about Congress Square is that it's the park that the City Council just recently tried to privatize um, to Rockbridge um, through a no-bid process and uh, with a result that ended up in a much less than a fair market value for what the property is actually valued at. <laughs> well, again, um, one of the things that is unique about uh, Congress Square is that um, it used to be a Dunkin' Donuts, uh, it used to be Lums, um, and it used to have a, a number of other commercial uses other than what it uh, currently is configured at this point. Um, and so I think that uh, the opportunity that we have at this point uh, is to revitalize the downtown, bring people to the downtown, to take Every, almost everybody, there may be some few exceptions, but almost everybody agrees that that's a failed space at this point. This is an opportunity for us to bring people to the downtown, to revitalize the space that is usable, and transform that intersection uh, at, at Congress Street and High Street. That's a unique opportunity for the city of Portland, mm -hmm. and I hope we don't um, uh, uh, pass that up. Great. Um one of the other questions that I myself need a little clarification about is how are the city-owned parks and public lands managed now? Mm -hmm. You want to go first? Well, there are a couple of different ways. We do have a parks commission. Um, we do have a parks department um, that uh, was rolled in as, as uh, uh, 
uh, Wells pointed out, uh, to public services. Um, and we do have a land bank commission. But the land bank commission was really set up um, uh, as a way to take land that is really for passive uh, uh, use. For example, the city just recently purchased uh, uh, almost 12 acres of Kanko Woods. Um, and that went into the land bank. That's not really considered so much uh, a, a, a park, and it is set up as a way to uh, protect it against, quote, development. Um, one of the things that's unfortunate in the um, uh, 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 issue that's been put forward in the petition is it really misuses the land bank, and the land bank was never set up for the purpose that's been identified in the petition, and the chair of the land bank um, has reaffirmed that position and said this is not really what the land bank was set up for. Um, so, so there are several different ways that the city manages parks and, and manages uh, open space. Um, and, and we think that the r route that the city council has chosen is a more prudent way to continue to manage uh, those spaces and those parks. And so to clarify, a commission is an appointed body that makes decisions at the higher level the big picture level, but a parks department rolled back into public services is actually the administrative body of the city that actually mm -hmm. manages those mm -hmm. lands. Okay. Yep. Well, so what would you, ha you are addressing how those lands are managed. Do you want to mm -hmm. add something? Absolutely. I think that uh, by adding these lands, the 35 parks to the lands bank, uh, which is essentially a safety deposit box against development for our parks and open spaces, and by adding a category of urban open spaces to the lands bank, what we're doing is making it much safer through our citizens' initiative um, to protect against these parks from being sold in the future. Now, the mayor's talked about the ordinance that the city council just mm -hmm. passed with an uh, advisory opinion uh, of the Parks Commission on whether or not the city council should sell or develop a pro property. Um, unfortunately, the city council asked the Parks Commission whether or not they should sell Congress Square and the Parks Commission unanimously said, no, we don't support this proposal. Uh, the City Council then steamrolled that advisory opinion. So we don't think that's strong protection. Uh, the other issue that we take with the so-called protection that the City Council passed just weeks before our referendum mm -hmm. um, is that it could be changed at any time, any time at all. Uh, it could be changed at the next City Council meeting. Mm -hmm. And what our referendum does is it adds uh, 25, or 35 new parks uh, to the lands bank. It adds protections to the 25 properties that are already there. Uh, requires the advise, uh, the recommendation of the lands bank commission, and then it requires a supermajority vote of the city council to sell a park. Uh, a very important piece of this is that it also requires uh, the referendum on whether or not the parks are sold to go to the people. And we think this is critical. Um, these referendums aren't anything that are unusual. I mean, we vote, uh, we're voting May 13th on the school budget uh, via referendum. And we think that when the city is about to sell off a public asset, uh, they should have a say in that. The, the people should have a vote in whether or not the parks get sold. Okay, I wanted and, to. And, and yeah. if I could just point out, Ann, um, <laughs> and I know Wells knows this, but many of the properties that he's talking about that are going in the land bank have uh, protections that are far beyond the land bank or what the city council has done. For example, the eastern prom is in state statute. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The western prom is also in state uh, statutes. There are also covenant and deeds that protect those properties. So again, to make the assertion <laughs> or to somehow try to argue that these properties can be sold at the whim of the uh, uh, city council is just not true. Um, there are all kinds of other uh, deed restrictions and other kinds of uh, protections for those properties. And that's why this petition drive and, and what's being proposed in there in terms of land bank um, uh, ordinance simply aren't necessary. And again, I, I, I have to go back to the fact that this is really a, a, a debate about whether or not Congress Square and that initiative uh, goes forward. And I think overwhelmingly when people in the city understand the benefits um, of what's being proposed, that they're going to see that this is a clear winner uh, and a win-win situation for the city of Portland. The, if I may Go respond ahead. to that, I, I think the only winner here, if the sale of Congress Square uh, does proceed, is going to be Rock Ridge Capital, uh, a parking lot that's just a couple of blocks down from Congress Square Park uh, was valued at over $2 million when it sold a couple of weeks after the proposed sale of Congress Square Park. And frankly, the half a million dollars that the city got for uh, the deal uh, is just 
embarrassing. I mean, this was a deal that was made by politicians, not businessmen. It was not through the real estate market. Uh, and it was a no-bid process. And we don't think that's how our parks should be sold. Right. Uh, they should be decided by the people uh, in the event that that happens. Okay. But this is about adding protections to 60 of our parks. And absolutely, some of our parks do have stronger protections, mm -hmm. and that's fantastic. We want to add to those protections, especially for the parks that don't. But, uh, but again, as I pointed out, the ordinance that was passed by the city actually adds more protections to more parks. But secondly, I, I, I just have to go back and, and um, you know, Wells, we can disagree about this, um, but we did. We, we we clearly understood the importance of getting maximum value for that property, and um, we had city staff um, that uh, went at that issue backwards and front. And to say that uh, we didn't get maximum uh, value for that, or this is somehow a windfall to Rockbridge, just isn't true. It was based <laughs> on a 2008 uh, mm -hmm. evaluation. Right at the bottom of. And this may not be bubble. where you wanted to go, but is there, a, is there any clarification at all about what their intention is with that space? There's an event center mm -hmm. um, that's planned, and that event center would bring three to 400 people on a regular basis mm -hmm. to the downtown of Portland. And one of the long-term goals of the city of Portland has been to revitalize the downtown and to bring more people to the downtown. That clearly fits that objective, and that's why the city council um, acted in the way that it did. We have struggled uh, in the city of Portland, along with other cities in Maine across the country, to anchor our downtown, to make sure that our downtown is a place that is vital and that people want to come to. And again, this is a unique opportunity for us uh, to bring people into the downtown where there are businesses, where we have arts, um, and, and, and to revitalize that section uh, of Portland. So we're very excited about that uh, possibility. Right. The city Go council ahead. seems to think that this event center, um, which is really a one-story uh, <laughs> windowless bunker, uh, is going to be the golden ticket for economic development in our downtown. But that's incredibly short-sighted. And it, it based, it's based off of a theory of economic development for cities it's probably 30 years old, that event centers are somehow going to bring in jobs and visitors and things like that. Uh, what we should be doing is looking at our context in the global economy, where we have young professionals who can really work anywhere, uh, who base where they're going to live and work and raise families and pay taxes off of, more than anything, the quality of life of a city. Mm -hmm. um, we should look at attracting retirees to Portland. Um, it's been held up as one of the best cities to retire to. And mm -hmm. something that retirees care so much about is uh, open spaces and quality of life. Right. And if you look at uh, the property taxes uh, that parks provide, it's actually fantastic. Uh, Boston did a study of this back in 2006, where they found that uh, the property values of uh, Boston residents were increased by $720 million because of well-maintained, healthy parks. That added $8 million in municipal tax revenues. So to suggest that by selling off our parks that we think are failed spaces is somehow going to increase economic development, that's very, very short-sighted. That's eating the goose that lays the golden egg when we should be investing in our parks, strengthening them, and improving them. Uh, unfortunately, the idea that this is a failed space, um, you know, it's the city council that's failed this space, Mayor. It really is. This, the Friends of Congress Square and Protect Portland Parks has done more in the last two months to improve this space than the city council has done in the last 20 years. And we've done that through some very simple things, bringing in seating for one, removing the planters with the spikes on them that keep people out, uh, bringing in a food truck. And if you go down there today, you'll see 30 or 40 or 50 people having lunch enjoying that space. It's not a failed space anymore. It's a space that's being saved and it's important to the downtown. Uh, a lot of people in this, the most densely populated part of Portland don't have other access to outdoor space. So this is just one space, but our initiative goes so much farther uh, by adding I protections want to, come back to, 60. to some of those other parts. Right. Right. And, and you know, again, um, I, I think it's important to point out that um, there was uh, a group um, that was put together in 2008, uh, Congress Square Redesign Committee that spent three years um, mm -hmm. looking at what to do with Congress Square. And um, by the time they got to the end of the discussion, it was simply, we're gonna do an RFP to look at what, what to do there. <laughs> So um, I, I think it hasn't been necessarily lack of attention by the city. I think the fact that, um, I'll go back uh, to use the word, it is by consensus a failed space. This is an opportunity not only for us to utilize that space, but to take almost 4,800, almost 5,000 square feet 
and the front of that park and enhance that in a way that really will um, uh, provide more public access and more utilization by the public. So that's why I say it's a win-win situation. Um, we can either, and I would invite anybody that uh, to go look at Congress Square now and say, is this what we want uh, to continue to have? Because if people vote for the petition, that is basically an endorsement of the status quo. And, and we, uh, uh, we, we've had uh, the status quo for several years, and I think people uh, in the city of Portland are willing to move forward at this point. I would invite the <coughs> voters in the city of Portland to come down to Congress Square as well and, and to mm -hmm. see the events that are planned there, uh, the free Wi-Fi that's being provided, the tables and chairs that are now there, uh, and the landscaping, and it's, it's an enjoyable space. It's, it's a good place to have lunch, and mm -hmm. you know, these, it's just too bad that it took the actions of volunteers mm -hmm. to improve this space um, when the city had done nothing but fail that space for so many years. Now, who's responsible for what those changes that are being made this spring? Uh, that's exclusively the Friends of Congress Square Park. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's some programming that's being provided by Space Gallery as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and, and these are the things that are going to make that uh, a space that yeah. people want to enjoy. Yeah. And, yeah. And, in and, the and, past and, and virtually everything that Wells is talking about they're doing now are gonna, uh, will be possible mm -hmm. with the uh, plaza that will be developed um, a, a, as a result of the Congress Square initiative. But I think the other point that uh, Wells is leaving out is that this is also an opportunity to transform that intersection in Portland and make it a gateway to the city um, in ways now that we don't have. And, and so, again, I, I think it's a three-part win-win for the city to bring people to the downtown, to have a space that is usable by the public and accessible to the public, and to transform that intersection. Well, I don't want to backtrack too far, but um, I wanted to make it really clear um, what is the difference between the Land Bank Commission and the, and the Parks Commission, um, and then talk a little bit more about what properties are covered by each and, and how that would change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go ahead? Well, the Land Bank Commission was set up by the City Council, and, and it um, has uh, Cheryl Lehman, who's a City Councilor, is one co-chair, and Tom Jewell, who's a volunteer, is another uh, co-chair. There are people on it serve uh, by appointment uh, by the City Council, um, and, it, and, it, and it was set up with the intent of looking at uh, land or property in the city that um, we would want to, quote, put into a land bank um, because it wasn't uh, to be developed. But typically uh, what has gone into the land bank have been um, properties that uh, aren't intended to be developed but also uh, have a very passive uh, use to it. It was not intended for parks and for other open space in the city of Portland. And so that's why it's not a very good choice uh, in the uh, referendum uh, to have the land bank be the holder of the public parks and other spaces within the city. So it would be uh, the two things, and I would like to know a little more about the Parks Commission too. Sure. And then, then sure. Yeah. And the Parks Commission uh, is set up for the purpose, and again, uh, members are appointed by the City Council um, to oversee the parks mm -hmm. uh, in Portland and to um, uh, recommend to the City Council and to appropriate people um, how we can best uh, maintain, how we can enhance, um, and how we can uh, maximize use of the parks within, and, and open spaces within the city. And, and, and we just signed a, a, a letter uh, with the uh, lands, uh, uh, main land trust uh, uh, commission to uh, work with us to inventory all our open space in the city of Portland and to uh, look at ways that we can uh, protect other properties into the future but also look at uh, other uses that we could have that would uh, achieve goals, uh, goals that we have within the city. Well, uh, we think that putting the parks under the protection of the Lands Bank Commission makes all the sense in the world because we're trying to do exactly what the Land Bank Commission is also trying to do, which is to preserve open, undeveloped spaces. Uh, this referendum simply adds a category of urban open spaces to the uh, mission of the Lands Bank Commission. Uh, as far as the importance of the Parks Commission, unfortunately the City Council doesn't particularly take a whole lot of interest in the Parks Commission, um, or the parks generally, I would argue. Yeah. And I say this because under the ordinance that was passed by the City Council, they're claiming it's the strong protection when in fact it can be changed at any time. Uh, and it only requires the advice of the Parks Commission. Well, the Parks Commission gave their opinion on the sale of Congress Square Park. They unanimously opposed it. 
every single member of the Parks Commission opposed this measure, and the City Council said thanks for your advice and threw it in the trash. Uh, we think that the decisions about whether or not to privatize our public spaces, which are so important to our quality of life, our neighborhoods, and our economy, that is something that should go to the Lands Bank. And then it should be up to the voters to decide and, whether and again, or not their properties get sold. I mean, it's not your park to sell, uh, Mayor. If uh, you want to sell two-thirds of your front lawn, and, you can, uh, but you can't and, just sell our parks. And, you know? and, and, and if it's I your just park, go back, and it's my uh, park, too. To mention quickly, the, the chair of the Land Bank uh, said they were not consulted uh, in the development of this uh, petition drive, and they don't think it's an appropriate use um, of the land bank for what has been identified in the petition drive. So, um, and, and you know, uh, I think that's a great soundbite, Wells, to say it's not my park and I can't um, um, sell it. Um, as I pointed out earlier, that particular piece of property has gone through any number of different uses uh, uh, over the year. Um, when we initially uh, uh, looked at it, at, I, I, I've lived in Portland for uh, uh, a, a number of different years. I actually lived in the Parkside neighborhood. Um, that is a failed space. We as a city need to do something differently with that space. And to con continue to cling to the status quo, um, I don't think uh, serves the city of Portland best. But we're not okay. talking about the status quo. What we're talking about, Mayor, is what has happened in that park in the last couple of months and what we can do to make sure that our public spaces aren't sold in the future. This citizens initiative on June 10th is going to add protections to 60 of our parks and open spaces. And it adds protections that are much, much, much stronger than those yep. suggested by the city council. You're talking, yep. and theoretically, you're talking about all the properties, the parks plus those that are in the land bank now. Absolutely. That's how right. you get to the number of right. 65 but, but, 70. But the, the ordinance, again, passed by the city mm -hmm. um, is a more robust list. We actually have more on the list that we've put on a, a, a priority list. And, and I have to say, um, you know, I, I appreciate um, uh, some of the comments that made by Wells, but I've never really seen where good public policy has been drafted through a referendum process. It is always drafted by a few people that sit down and say, here's what we think uh, best represents our idea. And that's what happened in this case. Uh, there was very little public process, there was very little public input, and it was a very small group of people that sat down and said, now it's going to take an eight to one vote by the city council. And if they um, don't get an eight to one vote, it's going to have to go to uh, uh, six votes in the city council. Right. I'm, I'm glad the mayor brought that up because yep. it wasn't a small group of people who decided that this should be on the ballot. It was 4,200 mm -hmm. Portland voters who broke records in signing our petition mm -hmm. to get this to a vote. The people want to decide. We tapped into something really, really big here. After the city council initially denied us our rights, denied us our petitions, and, you know, the lower court agreed with us, and just recently the, the main Supreme Judicial Court mm -hmm. agreed with us that we had a right to collect those that signatures. That right to have but, them on but, the ballot. But, but, yes. but, that, but that, those court rulings had nothing to do with the merits of the proposal of mm -hmm. Congress Square. Um, and, and, and again, I have to go back uh, to the fact that when people vote um, on, on this issue uh, on June 10th, it really is simply about whether or not they believe going forward with the proposal in Congress Square makes sense or whether or not they accept the status quo. Mm -hmm. Absolutely One, not. We have about four minutes left. So I wanted to make sure that we did cover the question about how ordinances are amended through city council and how they would be through your measure. Mm -hmm. So, Mayor Brennan? Well, um, the, the, if this um, uh, uh, petition referendum were to pass, um, the city council, nobody can change it for five years. Mm -hmm. um, that's somewhat unusual in the state legislature when there's a, a referendum that, that is passed. Uh, the legislature treats it like statute and it can change it immediately. And it has done that in the past because some of the um, referendums have been uh, written in a way that um, ha they've been uh, unable to implement. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of an ordinance that has been passed by the uh, uh, city council, it stays in place until the city council uh, chooses to do something differently. Right. And I know this is a big piece of your referendum, so you want to go ahead about how the amendment process? Absolutely. Um, what the vote on June 10th is going to do is to provide protections for five years. Um, I think that if we're serious about protecting our parks, what we should do is not take the word of the city council that just voted to sell one of our parks and then realize there's public outcry, mm -hmm. we better make it look like we're doing something and pass something that we can change whenever we feel like it, whenever public opinion shifts or attention is diverted. Uh, but instead to put it to the voters and mm -hmm. say, 
if we think we should protect our parks in a way that's serious, in a way that is meaningful, and in a way that's going to preserve these open spaces for future generations, then yes, we need to take it out of the hands of the city council. Because sometimes politics determines policy. And we think that this is something that the people should decide on. Right. And I, I just have to point out again, and I, 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 I'm sorry, Wells, to keep going back to that. But the, the, um, that threat just doesn't exist. And the second thing is, as I pointed out earlier, many of the parks uh, that we're talking about already have um, extensive deed restrictions, uh, legal restrictions, and as I already pointed out in the Eastern Prom and the Western Prom, it's the state legislature that passed statute. So this idea that the city council randomly can sell off parks or open space, um, it, it's just not true. It's just what they and, tried to do. And, 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 it, and, and it, it, nobody um, uh, uh, on the city council uh, is more protective of open space and, and public space than, than I am. And I believe that that sentiment is chair, shared by other city councils. Congress Square is a completely unique circumstance. Mm -hmm. And as I pointed out, uh, the history of Congress Square has been a Dunkin' Donuts. It has been a Lum's restaurant. Um, to equate that with the Eastern Prom in terms of protection, um, it is really kind of a non sequitur in my mind. We are coming very close to the end. You have one quick sentence for the for our close. Great, thank you so much, Ann. Uh, I'd urge the voters of Portland to vote yes on June 10th uh, in support of strengthening our protections for all 60 of our parks and open spaces. And thank you for uh, watching. And thank you for watching. <clears throat> the importance of this issue cannot be overestimated. <clears throat> we know how important this conversation is in helping to give you a better idea of the kinds of things that are happening and the different impacts of these different proposals. We hope that you'll take this to heart and that you will vote on June 10th, and we appreciate your being with us today. Thank you. Thank you, sir.